The point of the what do you think argument unit is developing an argument, which means that the central assignment for this unit is the argument paper, and you will write four of these. The final argument paper will be a grade for a final assessment, which means it will add to your final grade for the class. The first three are practice. Complete those three argument papers to receive feedback because chances are very good that this assignment will be difficult for you the first time out. Fine-tuning your work through practice will lead to an excellent final product on the final assessment. In this tutorial, I will explain how to complete the argument paper, building upon your work with the tutorials and the argument worksheet. Let's go. You will receive, through Google Drive, this blank form, What Do You Think Argument Paper. It includes a few headings and some clues on where exactly you would type everything. Do not forget that it also includes a link to the rubric. Check out the rubric as you're writing the paper and as you're proofing it, just to make sure that you're doing everything that is necessary to earn a solid grade. You will type your title here. Your title can be simply your claim, and I'll show you that in a moment. You'll start your text here. This is a heading for your Works Cited section, and this is where you will type your Works Cited entries. If you simply replace this with your title, replace this with your starting text, leave this as a heading, and replace this with your first entry, everything should be formatted just fine. You will use 14-point Arial font, single-spaced. Do not bold anything except for the title and the Works Cited subheading. Everything else should work in format properly if you simply complete it in that way. Of course, you have access to a model example of this paper on my big campus. Let's take a look at that. My paper centers on the claim that schools should allow students to express their free speech rights in school. It seems a little redundant, but it's specific. I have completed it based upon my work here on the argument planning worksheet. You see my claim, my warrant, my evidence, and everything that I've discussed in the previous video. Look at this paper map. The paper in my final paper follows this procedure. Introductory story, warrant, claim, and so on. So, as you look through this model example, click on the annotations to note the different sections. For instance, all papers will start with an introductory story. A story that you probably found from a news article, maybe even your New Zealand article, as I did. My New Zealand article talked about a Ninth Circuit Court of Appeals case in Nevada. And I summarize it here. In a ruling on February 14, 2014, the Ninth U.S. Circuit Court of Appeals declared that the uniforms at Roy Gom Elementary School in Nevada are unconstitutional because they deny students' right to free speech. The uniforms carried the logo Tomorrow's Leaders, and some thought that forced students to speak the government's message, which is illegal. This is a sing simple two-sentence summary of that story. Nothing very complex here. It simply tells people what that story was about. And that's how I start. I start with an example. That then leads into my warrant. I've started with the warrant before the claim because I like to lead with the value that I am seeking to achieve. This case reminds the nation that students should enjoy their constitutional rights. The second part of the sentence is my claim. So students should allow them to express spe that speech in, I'm sorry, so schools should allow them to express that speech in school. This is my introductory paragraph. It starts with an example, goes to my warrant, and ends with my claim. The next paragraph follows the model worksheet plan. It starts with an expansion of my warrant, continues with evidence. Then I introduce the opposing position with claim and warrant. I provide transition, I counter that opposing position, and I provide evidence. Finally, I conclude. If that was a little fast for you, don't worry. You have access to this model example. Go more slowly through it. Read each section as I read the first paragraph. Make sure that yours is following the same format. Generally, this will be a four-paragraph format. If you find the need to include more evidence, you wish to make your argument more complex, then you can increase the number of paragraphs if you wish. 
However, if you're unsure about what to do, follow my model fairly closely. This will help you develop an argument that is clear. Finally, the paper will end with a Works Cited section. The Works Cited section must include at least three cited pieces of evidence, and you'll notice that I included MLA in-text citations throughout the paper. Each time, I cited a piece of evidence. The citations here use hanging indentation and everything else that a Works Cited entry should use. If you do not recall how to construct a Works Cited section, refer to the Speaking for What's Right unit. We did a lot of work with MLA formatting and research there. Take a look at video tutorials or model examples to remind yourself of how to construct entries and the overall Works Cited section. Once you have followed the paper plan in the worksheet, You've written your paragraphs, you've included your in-text citations, and your work cited section, you are finished. This paper should be pretty short. In fact, let's do a word count on mine. The text of my paper lasts for 302 words. That's fairly short. Yours will probably last about three to 400 words as well if you are doing your job properly. If you have trouble beginning, trouble continuing, or fine-tuning a transition, or including some evidence, remember to rely upon workshop time in class to help you. Write drafts and submit them for individual feedback. If you do this, you will fine-tune your skills on writing argument papers, and by the time you write your fourth, you'll knock it out of the park.